The indigenous peoples of North and South America have invented a ton of things that made a great impact across areas as different as the medical world in leisure time. It's eight incredible inventions of the indigenous peoples of the Americas. If you're a skier or a snowboarder, you have the Inuit people to thank for inventing one of your most important pieces of equipment, goggles. For thousands of years, the indigenous residents of the Arctic Greenland, Canada, and Alaska, also known as the Inuit, have been fashioning their own special goggles to protect their eyes from sunlight bouncing off the snow. The Inuit spend hours each day on the frozen tundra, working and hunting for food. When exposed to these harmful ultraviolet rays for too long, they experienced snow blindness, which basically meant their corneas got a sunburn. So the Inuit learned to use wood, bone, antler, baleen, or leather to cover their eyes, then cut a thin slit across the middle to see out of. The goggles essentially mimicked squinting. It's also been found that the goggles can improve vision by focusing light in such a way that it makes faraway objects appear sharper. You can also thank the Inuit and other Arctic cultures for inventing the thing your dad always insists on pulling out when you're at a lake house, the kayak. Used primarily for hunting and fishing, kayaks were designed to have no openings so that it wouldn't fill with water or sink if it capsized. The captain of the kayak wore a shield covering where he sat, completely sealing the vessel from filling up. The kayaks were super light. The frame was made of wood, and then seal skin or other animal hides were stretched over it. They were then rubbed down with animal fat to waterproof it. Their size and weight made them easy to transport through the woods and shallow areas, and to silently glide through water undetected. Modern kayaks are typically made of plastic and manned by ants on vacation, or adrenaline junkies on a ton of Mountain Dew flying off a waterfall. But the basic design is still exactly the same. The Brooklyn and Golden Gate Bridges are famous examples of suspension bridges. Centuries prior, indigenous peoples of South America were masters of their own version. From the 14 to the 1600s, the Incas in Peru built what was basically a highway system of over 200 suspension bridges across their vast mountainous empire. Made entirely of rope woven from plant fibers and wood, these bridges resemble the types you'd see a movie adventurer racing across high above a crocodile-infested river. Although dangerous and high winds, nobody's feet were crashing through planks of the real ones. They were strong enough to transport livestock and large enough that if llamas fell on their sides, they would not fall off. Stretching up to 150 feet across rivers and ravines, these were the longest suspension bridges on the planet at the time. The longest suspension bridges in other parts of the world were almost half the length. One of these ink and rope bridges still stands today and is repaired annually, accompanied by a three-day festival. Communities on both sides are happily roped into the event. The Medicine Man often appears in popular culture in representations of indigenous people. This person's practice often combines herbal medicines with spiritual healing. Native American peoples developed a number of natural remedies for pain management that are the basis of painkilling drugs used today. Healers in several places in North America ground gymsum weed into a soothing plaster to spread over cuts and bruises, and people would eat it as an anesthetic when setting broken bones. There was also a tea made from the American black willow, which contained salicin, which caused the body to produce salicylic acid, the modern ingredient in aspirin. Over a thousand years before you took luxurious summer afternoon naps on one in the backyard, the hammock was the main mode of sleeping for the indigenous peoples of Central America. Originally made from woven bark of the hammock tree, hammocks protected the suspended sleepers from being stung or bitten by critters, snakes, and insects. The savviest snoozers lit small fires beneath their hammocks to keep them warm and repel bugs. Meanwhile, mattresses of the day, stuffed with straw, were the perfect breeding ground for pests and disease. Hammocks' swaying motion may also allow for deeper sleep. A recent study showed that people who slept in rocking beds had better synchronization between their brain waves and body motion. The highest strung hammock ever recorded? The ones brought on board on Apollo 12 in 1969, of course. 
Needless to say, the hammock, ham rocked. Skip this one if you're squeamish. Indigenous people actually invented the syringe. The early indigenous people of South America developed a device that closely resembled the modern syringe, and they used it for the very same purposes. A sharpened, hollow bird's bone attached to an animal bladder that could inject the body with medicines and irrigate wounds. We appreciate the contributions indigenous doctors have made to the medical community, but also, why did they have to do that? Shots are scary, but my doctor says I'm too old for a lollipop. The Aztecs of the 14 to 1600s mastered an agricultural technique that had existed for centuries and is still used today. Chenampams are essentially mini islands, enriched soil piled up in marshy, swampy areas around lakes for the purpose of growing crops. Think of them like an ancient version of the Palm Islands off the coast of Dubai. And instead of sunbathing and snorkeling, you're growing food. The capital of the Aztec Empire was called Tenochtitlan, located on two islands in the middle of Lake Texcoco, modern-day Mexico City. In response to the city's rapidly increasing population, and with a lake between them and any fields, the Aztecs built a vast, super-organized system of chinampums. Each one was 30 by 2.5 meters, evenly spaced for canoes to move through and carefully irrigated. Chinampam agriculture was passed orally from generation to generation. Today, they occupy about 2,000 hectares of land and support a ton of biodiversity in the region. More than 3,000 years ago, the Olmec civilization of southern Mexico invented the chemical process of creating rubber. They were so well known for their incredible use of rubber that they even got their name from it. Olmec is the Nahuatl, or the Aztec language, word for rubber people. They would tap rubber trees, ficus elastica, to extract latex the same way you'd tap a maple for syrup. Then they'd mix it with juice from the morning glory vine, and when it coagulated, it was rubber. These early indigenous people had all sorts of uses for it that we all recognize today. Straps for tools, the soles of shoes, and of course, bouncing balls for playing games. In the 1700s, a chemist named Joseph Priestley, who clearly wasn't great at math, noticed that the material was good for rubbing away pencil marks, and the name rubber was coined. Which is a shame, because bouncy syrup is way more fun. That was just a few of the many inventions and contributions of indigenous people on modern society. Let us know if we missed your favorite in the comments below.